So, dobrý večer. Good, good, good evening. Uh, I'm Chancellor Pala, Director of the Czech Center. It's a pleasure to welcome you here uh, at the second edition of Women in uh, Focus uh, series. So, for those of you who have not been here uh, on the opening evening, let me just say that the, the program introducing inspiring female uh, personalities and their accomplished professional uh, journeys that the series aims is really to unveil intricacies uh, to various uh, fields. We, we started uh, four, four weeks ago with this arts, with Monika Čejkova from the National Gallery in, in, in Prague. They are going to be discussing, uh, talking about ballet, uh, moving forward maybe to areas of architecture, but also sports and so many, many, many hours. Uh, our guest speakers will also uh, address the, the challenges that they uh, encounter uh, throughout their career and share uh, from the practices that led to their successful and a very rewarding accomplishment. And I'm really, truly delighted that uh, our today's guest is Prima Ballerina uh, Daria Kunetova. Tania uh, would not need uh, introductions, I guess, to this audience. Uh, nevertheless, I would like to uh, say that uh, Daria, she was the lead principal dancer at the Czech National Theatre Ballet, as well as the English National Ballet here in London. She performed all major classical ballet roles uh, just to mention a few, the Swan Lake, uh, the Nutcrackers, uh, Sleeping Beauties, and a uh, number, number of other as well. I think it's worth mentioning uh, that the leading choreographer, Christopher Hampson, created uh, the award-winning ballet Double Concerto uh, for Daria, and uh, this piece also won the National Dance Award here in the UK. So since 2003, Daria has been the founder and director of the Prague uh, International Ballet Master, Power, Master Class, uh, supported perhaps by Master Class, uh, which is all the National Theatre in, in, in Prague, which brings together other leading uh, dancers, uh, such as Tamara Arosso, which you might know, she's been also a member of the Czech Center uh, podcast series during the, the COVID times, as well as Julio Boca, and uh, really with the aim to develop uh, the, the future generation of ballet, ballet stars. So after her active uh, dancing career in 2014, uh, Daria joined the prestigious uh, teaching staff at the Royal Ballet uh, school here in London, where she's still present days, and throughout the, the evening, I think she's going to be discussing some of her other passions. So, before I turn the floor to Daria, perhaps you thought that we'll show you a very brief video of some of the previous uh, performances.
questions what we have seen here, but uh, now we would like really to turn the floor to Daria for some her opening uh, remarks before we go to the interactive part uh, with the questions part. Well, I just have to apologize. I'm not used to talk. I'm used to dance. <laughs> so, uh, yeah, I'm really sorry if uh, I will just stop suddenly or if you don't understand, just go and stop me and ask again. Um, I'd rather dance for you here than talk. <laughs> um, so I don't know where to start. I guess um, I was born in the Czech Republic while it was a Czechoslovakia before. I was born in Prague. Uh, I started, when I was five years old, I started uh, gymnastics. We had uh, some like a ballet preparation uh, once a week. And the ballet teacher, she saw talent in me and she went and uh, talked to my parents. She said that uh, she's talented, she's going to have a, a much better future as a ballet dancer because they last longer. Gymnasts, that they stop when they're 30 years old, the body is completely damaged which ballet dancer has the body damaged much later. <laughs> um, okay, so I've never seen ballet in my life. My parents came to me and they asked, oh, would you like to do ballet? And I asked, uh, can I still kick my legs? And they said, uh, yes, we'll be kicking your legs for quite a few years. So I said, okay, <laughs> I'll do it. Um, then I did an uh, audition for the uh, ballet school. I had to go to doctor and get a, a you know, certificate that uh, my body will last long. Um, the first doctor, he didn't give it to me. He looked at my back and he said, she, he said, oh, she's gonna have problems with back. It's not possible for her to be ballet dancer. But my mom, she didn't give up. So she took me to a different doctor and the doctor looked at me. He said, oh, show me splits and uh, this and that. And he gave me the paper. Um, just to mention actually something because uh, I am really in pain with my back now. So maybe <laughs> the first doctor actually was a bit bright. I developed scoliosis on my back and I'm um, 24 hours in pain. Oh, <laughs> well, maybe it's normal for a dancer, I don't know. Um, but I think it's the scoliosis. I have to exercise. I don't dance anymore. I don't go on stage anymore. But I do have to exercise every single day. But um, I do enjoy it. Yeah, I don't think like that I am suffering by exercising. It's, uh, it's a little bit uh, like a drug. Like I, I just, if I don't exercise, I really don't feel good. Even my mood is bad. And when I go and uh, exercise and my mood gets better, I uh, feel like I'm much more mobile. I feel like I can go upstairs very easily. I'm talking to you like I am 90 years old here. No? <laughs> No, it's, uh, yeah, you do damage uh, body by doing ballet. It's, it's not very natural, actually, because we have to have these legs turned down like this, it's these extreme legs, all these bendings. You, you do damage your body. I'm really sorry. <laughs> there was a question early on asking what I would, uh, what I would suggest uh, for young dancers, yeah, if, if what, what I would advise them to do, and I, as a joke, I said, don't do it. <laughs> don't go into it. No, it's, it is beautiful, it is beautiful. Okay, so let's go back. So I was in a, a ballet school, uh, which was for eight years, uh, yeah, I studied there for eight years in Prague in the Czech Conservatory. It was, I uh, don't remember much actually. Um, yeah, I was, I was a very good student. I was always doing what they asked me to do. A little bit lazy. I, I didn't do any extra. If they told me to do it ten times, I would do it ten times. I would never do it uh, eleven <laughs> times. <laughs> so I actually had uh, always uh, the best mark from the technique and the artistry, but always uh, not very good mark from the effort. You know. So. I cheated a little bit. <laughs> During the exams, I would go and I asked, uh, can I go uh, to bathroom? So I went to bathroom and I uh, sprayed myself with water everywhere so it looked like I'm sweating. <laughs> it looks like I'm uh, working hard. Yeah, no, I didn't get away with it. So I studied for eight years. Uh, I graduated with a role called Aurora from Sleeping Beauty, which is one of the hardest classical ballet in my opinion um, then i went and i did audition for a czech national ballet 
I uh, managed to get in, and after one year, I was uh, promoted to principal dancer, which was quite uh, unusual. Uh, it was a lot of pressure because there were these uh, ballerinas, which they were there for 20 years, and of course they were amazing. They were my my uh, idols when I was in the school, and then suddenly I was there. And I was doing the same roles, so it was. A lot of pressure because I I, I thought uh, I don't deserve to have that uh, contract, but hey, I had it there, so uh, <laughs> um, I had the roles in front of me, and if you have the roles, you have uh, something to work on, and uh, I managed to improve much faster than if I would be in a corps de ballet waiting for the chance. So I uh, consider it very lucky. I'm very very lucky. I stay there for. Uh, three years, which I really enjoyed because it was my dream to dance at the National Theatre in Prague. Um, after three years, I, uh, wait, it wasn't that easy. I went, uh, I went to many competitions. I went uh, to a Prix de Lausanne, very famous competition as well. I was uh, one of the uh, prize winners. And last competition, I went to South Africa, which was in Pretoria. I did get gold medal. And there was an artistic director, Veronica Paper, from uh, Cape Town Ballet Company. She really liked me, and uh, she brought me as a guest artist to her company. So I spent uh, four months dancing Nutcracker. After that, she offered me a, a full-time contract. So I went back to Prague, and I was thinking about it. I mean, South Africa, Cape Town is a little too far. I thought there's not much culture there. <laughs> But uh, yeah, I was very young, I was ambitious, and uh, it was just in front of me, so I thought it would be crazy if I wouldn't go and uh, try it. So, uh, and also I thought I will learn English, maybe I will uh, make some money, and I will, I will definitely come back to, to my dream company. So I went there for uh, one year, I danced uh, all the classical ballet repertoire, Midsummer Night's Dream, Swan Lake, Sleeping Beauty, all this. So, some of uh, ballets from Kirian or Hans van Manen. Really enjoyed it. Um, but uh, I didn't have uh, many shows. I would dance maybe two shows a month, which is not, uh, it's not enough. I spend more time in the studio than on stage, and it should actually be maybe the other way around. So I wasn't motivated enough, but uh, I really enjoyed my life, uh, riding ostriches, which is not allowed anymore. <laughs> Um, yes, and I was a little bit uh, getting lazy and a little bit out of shape. And I just thought, no, you don't want this. I was always very ambitious. So uh, in the same competition in the Pretoria, there was a prima ex prima ballerina called Galina Samsova. She was the artistic director of Scottish Ballet at that time. She gave me the same invitation to come and dance in her company. So I thought it's time to move on. So I went to Glasgow, stayed there for three years. I wanted to leave every year. <laughs> uh, not, not because of the company or the roles I was dancing, it's just because it was so cold. <laughs> it was just freezing, I was sleeping in tracks. <laughs> Raining and cold. But uh, um, artistically, it was really wonderful. She gave me so much chance. Uh, chances. I danced the ballet from Balanchine, which I never done before. She worked uh, with me on Swan Lake on all these details. She actually danced herself. So it was a wonderful experience. But again, time to move on. <laughs> so uh, I got invitation from the artistic director of English National Ballet, uh, Derek Dean, to come to London and uh, to kind of, not audition, but just to come and uh, have a look at the company and uh, take a class with, with them, with the company. He liked me and uh, he offered me contract. After that, I spent 18 years dancing with English National Ballet as a ballerina. And uh, then I retired and I am currently a ballet teacher at the Royal Ballet School. And I'm here sitting. That was quick, wasn't it? <laughs> no, it was wonderful. I was just thinking, you know, how far you can get if your primary motivation is kicking your legs. <laughs> uh, no, uh, 
I'm sure there's going to be a little bit more. You mentioned that your dream was to dance uh, the, the Czech uh, National Theater uh, Ballet, but when it I guess really cross your head that, that that's your ambition. You mentioned a few times you're ambitious, you made all the steps, the right steps uh, to, to move up. But from the, the, the early age, uh, was there something that kind of sparked your interest uh, to, to ballet or maybe uh, as you kind of get over the, the, the first motivation uh, when the second one kicked on, uh, maybe the third one? Well, in the beginning, I didn't like it at all because as a gymnast, you are moving much more. You, yeah, you're kicking the legs, you are bending, you're doing all these somersaults. So that was exciting for me. And in the ballet school, they put me you know, at the ballet bar and you had to do these slow movements with the leg, with the arm, and just the head, over and over, and for hours. So I just find it actually quite, yeah, in a way, boring. And I used to have my fringe and my ponytails and gymnast. <laughs> And uh, they just put their head up and in the barn, and I just, I don't know, I just felt really uncomfortable without my fringe. I still do. <laughs> um, but then I just slowly fell in love with it. I loved the music, I loved the costumes as a, every little girl. And uh, because I was talented, it was quite easy for me. And of course, that feels good when, <laughs> when it's easy. Um, yeah, I. Uh, loved being on stage, uh, I loved performing and I definitely loved the challenge, always, all my life, I loved challenge, I was ambitious and uh, I think about two years after when I started in the ballet school I knew I wanted to be a ballet dancer, I knew I wanted to work in the theatre, I even thought like if I don't make it as a ballet dancer I want to be a makeup artist or I thought even selling the tickets, I just wanted to be in the theatre. <laughs> I, lo I love the smell of the theatre, the backstage, and yes, no, I just, I was going to be a ballet dancer. Uh, maybe just follow up what you said, you also mentioned the Prague Conservatory uh, School, which uh, clearly gave you a very solid foundation for your international, international career. There are many stories about the school, I guess, about any other ballet school, which I would think is extremely difficult and demanding. Uh, so what are your recollections of those years? I know you mentioned you do 10, not 11 or, or 12, uh, but uh, how was it? Because that was really, I think, that the forming years uh, for a ballerina now, yeah, for a ballet dancer. Um, well, I was uh, such a good student that I would always do what they asked me to do. Um, I wasn't questioning if, uh, I don't know, if it's, good for me or not. I basically had complete trust uh, to my teachers. Uh, the technique was Russian technique, Vaganova technique, uh, which is quite different to a British style. So when I left the uh, school and uh, I came to Britain, it was very hard for me to change the technique. Like, uh, for example, the fuetes, when I was turning on one leg, I learned for eight years going like this. And then I came here and it was just so hard to retrain it. Uh, usually if you, I don't know, do something for five years, it, take you, it takes you another 10 years to actually retrain. You know, can you imagine eight years doing one movement, same way, same way, and then suddenly they want a different way. It's, it's not that easy how it looks. You cannot just suddenly go and change it. So that was like, that was the biggest challenge for me from the, you know, the Czech, the Russian training. Also the approach, uh, for a teaching from the teachers was not the same like uh, it is now. They were just basically do it or you know go. Now it's a completely different approach. We we try to uh, support the students to encourage them, not uh, bully them or put them down. <laughs> yes, but it it was quite uh, normal before. I think it's uh, unfortunately in some ballet school schools still like that. But the real ballet school we try to change it. And I think we're doing quite well. Right, and um, from the school, of course, you end up uh, being a member of really the leading dancing companies of ballet companies in Prague, in London, so you mentioned Cape Town and Glasgow. Uh, as we were chatting before the evening, uh, what would be the differences if you can maybe compare some of the, the, the companies, uh, maybe the London ones and, and the ones in, in Prague? where you spend the most of the uh, time? 
Well, the difference, um, well, Czech Republic, the, the Czech National Ballet now called, uh, it was a, a copy of a of Russian company. Mm -hmm. Basically, it was a Russian-based repertoire, which uh, here in Britain, it was uh, slightly different, like I danced uh, ballets from Macmillan, a British very famous choreographer, or Ashton, or Michael Corder. So it was different, plus doing the classic Sleeping Beauties by uh, uh, Petty Park. Um, you were asking about the audience early on, weren't you? Well, for the audience, that was my the second part of the questions, right? Yes. The difference between the companies and please we go to the, to the audiences. And, I mean, there's not much difference in the companies here. We, the, they all have to work hard. We all have to work hard in the same way, anyway. Um, it's a difficult question, the difference. It's not much difference. Maybe the repertoire, maybe the vision of the artistic director, maybe the size of the company in Czech Republic. It was a much bigger company than the English National Ballet. Um, uh, with the English National Ballet, it's, it was actually a touring company. So we've done uh, a lot of tours, international tours as well. We danced much more than uh, in uh, Prague, because in Prague, uh, it was in one place, just in Prague, even though they are using actually three theaters now, which is wonderful. Uh, but uh, with English National Ballet, we had uh, many more performances. Like uh, if we went on tour, we did uh, let me see, 12 shows a week. Uh, yes, I didn't dance 12 times because that was a principle that would be quite impossible, but I would have a four to four to five shows a week easily with the, doing the main, main uh, part, which was still very difficult. But uh, you, you get used to it, you get just so super fit that you go on stage and you don't have to worry about the technique, you don't have to worry about the pirouettes, and you can actually go further with the role. You, you, you can play with it, you can be the Manon every night, you can be a, a, a different kind of Manon, <laughs> <laughs> passionate, in love. Or, so uh, yeah, no, I, it was plus, and I was on stage, we were doing even the ballet classes in the morning on stage, it, it was my home, it felt so comfortable there with all the spotlight and the audience looking at me. They yeah, loved it. <laughs> because you, you mentioned it, I mean, personally, I have profound admiration uh, for this profession because I think it really does combine on one side the uh, artistic uh, acumen and on the another one, really superb athletic strength, uh, very comparable with the top athletes. Uh, so, so the question for me is uh, how uh, these two competencies, how, how you develop, uh, which one might be easier to develop over time, which one you just have to have the profound talent, uh, which you just, if you don't have it, you cannot never make it to the top uh, as you have. So you can explore that. Well, I think you have to have a, um, the physical, um, how do you say it? Um, ability. The physical ability, yes. Well, you have to um, be flexible with your body. As the spine has to be flexible, that's very, very important. I think that's, that's the start of it. You need to have a um, need to have a passion for dance to be able to be an artist, actually, because in these days, actually, I find it a little bit, uh, and I think it comes from Instagram. But well, I don't know if you are on Instagram. <laughs> All of you, <laughs> probably not. But it's uh, all these uh, young girls, they're just showing the, you know, the legs behind their heads and the feet and the physicality. But then actually when you see them dance, it's, it's the reality is completely different. They are not artists, it's like a gymnast. Mm -hmm. So, uh, um, no, the, the, the foundation is very important. You need to have that. And on top of that, you, you just put the art and the, I think you have to be talented as well to be an artist and to be able to act. You can learn into a certain degree, but yeah, not everybody actually manages. You need to have the passion. Yeah. Well, I guess it, we don't see that many great <laughs> ballet dancers. Uh, there are some really beautiful ones. That they are. Um, I think we ran away a little bit from the previous questions, uh, and I recall uh, about the audiences. <coughs> as you perform around the world, uh, is there any differences among the audience in Prague, London, uh, Tokyo, 
or what have you? <laughs> yes, there is definitely a difference. Uh, if you would go, okay, let's say in Czech Republic, they're much warmer than here in Britain. <laughs> Sorry. <laughs> <laughs> no, in Czech Republic, they, they are not afraid to go and uh, like clap more, scream bravo, or react during the show. I'm not saying it's, it's correct, you know. Maybe it's correct as well, maybe to kind of be calmer and then at the end of the show scream. So I find the British audience uh, more reserved, but uh, at the end of the show, yes, they do like to clap. Uh, for example, in uh, China, when I was dancing in China, they were like absolutely quiet. <laughs> in, you know, in a classical ballet, uh, we do a dash and then we go and then bow, and there was like no clapping. <laughs> But it, it really put me off. I was just thinking, oh my God, am I doing something wrong? It just yeah, it made me feel really bad. I thought I was dancing really badly, that they wouldn't clap at all. And it was through the whole uh, uh, performance like this. But then when the show uh, finished, they were just, they were screaming, they were standing. It was, yeah, it was wonderful. It was wonderful. But I must say, I didn't really enjoy it. <laughs> I wanted some reaction. <laughs> I wanted attention. <laughs> So we are not in China. <laughs> this is an exciting to be very boring audience um, uh, here. Um, I think you concluded your professional career at a very respectable age, uh, 42, uh, dancing Romeo and Juliet with your long-term partner, uh, Vadim Muntagirov. And I want to ask you, perhaps in the light of the recent news about uh, Carlo uh, Acosta, who is coming back to the Royal Ballet at the age of 50. Maybe you might reconsider your decision. <laughs> no, I wouldn't go on stage anymore, but when I was, uh, I think it was 43 when I stopped. Well, I didn't stop, I left English National Ballet. I actually danced till I was uh, 48. I was doing uh, little shows, little galas. I danced with uh, Vadim Montagorov, who's uh, uh, 19 years younger than me. They compared us to a uh, Margot Fontaine and Nureyev, which, like, well, it's a, a, the biggest compliment. <laughs> I'm not sure if it was just the age or the way we danced. <laughs> that doesn't matter. Let's not mention that. <laughs> um, so yeah, so I danced uh, uh, another five years after I left English National Ballet and basically slowly, yes, disappeared from the stage. And I think it was a. Uh, very good decision for me than, than to stop from one day to another day. It's, uh, it's, it's very hard, you know, when you are uh, doing something all your life and then suddenly you have to stop. It's, it is mentally, psychologically really hard. It took me about three years to kind of accept it, that I'm not a dancer anymore. And we cannot dance forever. It's just the body was telling me, no, we've, you have to stop. Like my last year at the English National Ballet, I would uh, uh, prepare. I would be preparing the ballet, and then when the show came, my my knee would get swollen, and I actually couldn't do the show. So then I was preparing another ballet, and it's another knee got swollen, and then I couldn't go on stage. So it was like a whole year like this, and I just thought, uh, no, my body was screaming, no, please don't do this to me anymore. But then I had this little galas which was not such a pressure on my body and uh, it was less and less and then I just thought oh no I don't need it anymore I was happily not going on stage and I wouldn't go again but Carlos Acosta like, why not <laughs> 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 he's gorgeous isn't he? <laughs> I danced with him uh, Apollo myself actually and uh, I must say he's uh, uh, one of the best partners in the world was and he is just incredible. But you Montagero, he was very good as well, but uh, Carlos just, yeah, the winner, gold medal to him. <laughs> I very recall it, I believe he became the, uh, the lead principal dancer at the age of 18 at the Royal Ballet yes. here. And now it's going to be 50, and I believe in July it's going to be performing here in London, so there's still tickets available. Go. But uh, before I gonna turn the questions uh, to you, maybe the last last questions, last question. Um, perhaps if you can describe, uh, and you mentioned a little bit, uh, there was very clear sign that might be the time is right to transition from a high performing 
top job as a dancer to more in quotes the civil civil job. So the question how the previous career has prepared you for that transition and maybe you can expand how the transition went because uh, you already transitioned successfully to your new uh, new roles. Uh, one is the teachers you have mentioned and there's another one as well. Uh, well, um, I got this, uh, when I was uh, about 29 years old, I got this wonderful idea to uh, uh, create international ballet master classes in Prague. To, uh, uh, in those days, nothing was happening in Czech Republic, so I wanted to bring all my friends, all the ballet stars, and uh, give their experience to Czech students. That was the original idea. But then uh, all the uh, foreigners as well, they were interested to come and uh, it became uh, really successful and I had it for 20 years. So I've been teaching for quite a while. So it wasn't such a shock to go to a Royal Ballet School for me. So the transition was really like slow and graduate. I would say I was teaching for about 10 years in the master classes before I uh, become a, a full-time teacher at this wonderful school. So perhaps I'm going to turn it to any questions you might have in the, the audience. Please ask something. <laughs> <laughs> I will have to go and dance. <laughs> Hi. Um, number one, I come from China and I'm very happy to be here. And, but um, what I want to say is, I have to say ballet is a very, well, don't be feel embarrassed. <laughs> what I'm going to say is ballet is a very niche and a very westernized, uh, um, what we call the cultural items on the family's basket or whatever. Uh, and also, i give you an example. This is a, for us, is on the way of the evolution and then how to appreciate. Um, I'll give you an example. Uh, I think you are not the worst, the worst audience ever because I remember there's a big debate during the early age, uh, early, early time when boxing introduced to Chinese uh, market. Um, the newspaper says, our Chinese, we don't know how to cheer for the people. They said, beat him, beat him, hate him hardly, something like that. So I like for us, we are learning. It's kind of thing we are learning, and also Bali is a very westernized thing. But if you come to China, I love to cheer for you, and I love to uh, get my friends and my family to cheer for you at the right point. <laughs> thank you. Okay. So thank you for that. And my question is, um, after you have been going through all those uh, the peak season, and now during you they become um, career. Um, I, I always admire uh, the ability of all the ballet uh, dancers, especially who has a, a, who has a reached their peak season. Um, can you tell me, when you pick up some ballet dancers when they were young, let's say 11 years old, uh, from a ballet school, besides you mentioned about uh, um, physicality, uh, ability, or how they look, um, and also the passion, and also a lot of motivation. Besides that, I think to manage 100 performances so hard and have a different thing. So what else, the, uh, uh, how to say, capabilities, you really think can make people successful from the young age, let's say 11 years old, or maybe after their graduation uh, from the ballet school. Thank you very much. I mean, it's uh, very difficult to say when they are 11, if they're actually going to become ballet dancers. Yes, in, the, in our school we pick them, uh, of course, firstly with the, the, the uh, physicality, the physic, uh, you know, the correct physique, the, the flexibility and all that, the, if they have a coordination, um, if they are musical. So that's the first thing they have to have, but it's not guaranteed that it will uh, that will become ballet dancers, professional ballet dancers. The body can change. Usually the body changes for uh, girls when they are 15, 16. And uh, yeah, it could be a disaster actually. And uh, yeah, it's difficult. Um, what else would you like to know? <laughs> I'm really just interested what capability you can predict that people can be a ballet dancer, uh, sorry, ballet star. 
Balista. Oh my yeah. god, Balista. Uh, no, well, you don't know it when you are uh, 11 years old. You, you can tell that the, it, there, is the, there are the possibilities, but then it's, uh, you also need to be intelligent as a dancer. You cannot just uh, have the physical ability, you have to be intelligent. So if the teacher is advising you to do it like this, you have to be able to understand and to transfer it into your body. If you don't have it here and you have everything else, you usually won't make it unless you're very lucky. <laughs> So that uh, to be intelligent as a dancer is very, very important as well. You need to have the passion, as I said, you have to. Because uh, at the end of the day, it's up to the dancer. If they're working hard or not, the teacher can help you. But uh, once you leave the school, it's going to be up to you. There won't be a teacher who will be pushing you. So working hard, have a passion, be intelligent. Yes, all that, it's, uh, yeah, it's uh, never guaranteed. And uh, if you work hard and have all that, you need to be lucky as well. That's the last thing, that you need to be lucky. Maybe you are an amazing dancer, but uh, the director is looking for a, a taller girl, a blonde girl. So she, yeah, it, it, it is like, it's very hard actually. It's, it's unfair. A, a, lot of, uh, a lot of the times it's unfair. Because the dancer, she doesn't have something or the, the director likes. Yeah, you know what I mean. It's, it has to be basically lucky, very lucky. Hi, Dario. Uh, first of all, Dobby Betcher, and uh, thank you very much for uh, coming to see us again. Uh, I think the last time was at the uh, other end of the uh, over there. Um, anyway. Uh, my question is that, so, okay, it says Royal Ballet School, so I take it that's the one in Richmond Park, yes? Uh, yes and no, it's in the Richmond Park, White Lodge and at Covent Garden, there is yeah, the okay. upper school. So two, but the, the younger girls come to uh, uh, Richmond Park, do they not? Yes, first yeah. five years it's uh, Richmond okay, Park. Okay, so um, do, do you find you have to uh, motivate anyone, or are they already really, really motivated when they get, by the time they get there, and they've been sort of allowed into the school, what do you think? Well, I find the young girls actually very motivated already from the age, from the 11, 12 years old. Uh, they usually uh, do ballet since they were born. <laughs> and uh, yeah, they are very much so motivated. We don't need to do that much work on this. I, yeah, I find it they yeah working very hard, very much motivated. Uh, usually they're... Um, Ballerina, ideal ballerina is Marianella Nunes, <laughs> which is an amazing example. Um, uh, the other thing I was intrigued to, to know was uh, whether, uh, okay, you were born in Czechoslovakia, I suppose, and uh, uh, at uh, uh, a point it became uh, the Czech Republic. Uh, were you still in the Czech Republic when, uh, uh, when the changeover happened? We, you got rid of the Russians and the communists, etc. Or uh, you were, yes. Yes, I, I was still there. I just uh, graduated from the school. And I was just joined the company, so I remember it personally. This uh, uh, velvet revolution, wasn't it? Yeah. Right, it was the velvet revolution. Did you um, uh, did you find any difficulty in the transition? I mean, was uh, your life made harder by a transition or made easier? I, mean, but I assume it was easier to travel. Did you have any problem under the communists sort of going from place to place? Yes, uh, of course we did have problems here. We weren't allowed to travel. I mean, uh, I was going to competitions, like for example, when I was 17 years old, uh, they wanted me to go to Prix de Lausanne, and uh, I had to prove that I am the best in the school, and it was a lot of paperwork. Um, I, I, they did manage to send me there, and uh, they were expecting me to bring some medal back, which luckily I did. <laughs> so, <laughs> Great, well done. <laughs> uh, but it was a first time for me to be abroad, and it, it was a shock, because we didn't have much in Czechoslovakia. I'm sure you remember yourself, like uh, basic things, like uh, remember even toilet paper was not uh, around, or remember queuing for uh, bananas. We remember we got it only during Christmas and there was like maybe one kilo per family. But uh, I, I didn't suffer, I didn't know anything else. 
So, uh, yeah, I remember fighting with my brother over banana. My mom, <laughs> my mom would give us uh, one banana and we had to share it. And I remember that we were fighting with the knife who's going to have a one, one millimeter a bigger <laughs> banana. <laughs> Um, but yeah, I didn't suffer because you don't know anything else. And actually, it helps me now to appreciate things. I must say I'm very spoiled, uh, but I do appreciate uh, things. I appreciate my life. I, I understand which, uh, for example, my daughter, she doesn't really understand that because she mm. was born having absolutely everything. Well, I, mean, I meet young Czechs now occasionally, and they're totally oblivious to all the stuff before the uh, railway revolution, so uh, I'm not surprised really. It's a shame, I mean, we must remember these things that we should do. But, uh, yes. Uh, right, I think that's enough from me, I'll pass this on to somebody else. Um, hi Dario, thank you very much for sharing your experiences. Um, I'd like to ask two questions. Um, one, uh, what was your most favourite role to dance? And two, um, can you maybe share a little bit about the backstage life um, of ballerina? Is it, is it like what we've seen in Black Swan? Or, um, you know, is, <laughs> if you can elaborate more on that, please. Thank you. It's worse than that. <laughs> uh, no, okay, so my favorite uh, role, there's many favorite roles, it's difficult to, to pick one, but I think the most uh, favorite one is Manon because uh, I don't know it's it's a passionate woman it's you, you know all the story but what I liked uh, is uh, that I had a different approach to to this role every show as I said uh, the technique was already there so I could go and play with it one night I was uh, a loving Manon another night I was um, what do you say it nicely? A bitch? <laughs> <laughs> Sorry. <laughs> I'm not British, so it doesn't mean that much for me. <laughs> to me. Um, so yes, I think that, and also the music is uh, really gorgeous. Um, Juliet is one of my favorite roles, but interestingly enough, is uh, I fell in love with it when, uh, when I was 40 years old. Not, not when I was 18 years old. It's, uh, yeah, it, it, it's strange, you do need to have uh, some experience to actually understand that as well, who Juliet was. So I, I don't believe that you are 16 years old and you are the Juliet, no. You need to have some experience to understand, to be able to uh, play it and actually feel it. What was another question? Was uh, backstage. The backstage, okay. <laughs> um, well, it's it's not that bad as uh, as you think. Um, yes, uh, it's it, it depends on each company. If they are friendly, English National Ballet, uh, we were very friendly because it's traveling uh, company, so we are always together, always supporting each other. But uh, for example, at the Royal Ballet, they are not so friendly to each other. They've got uh, this wonderful opera house, which is. Uh, huge place, I don't know, maybe some of you have seen it inside, uh, many beautiful studios, so uh, you're not kind of together, You sometimes you don't even see each other during the day, so I find it uh, a little bit, uh, I don't know, maybe a little bit unfriendly, like for example the, the principal dancers, they don't uh, see the court de ballet dancers at all, they have their separate rehearsal and then uh, after three weeks, they would have the full call, but they are, you know, they're concentrating on their job, on their role. So they don't, yeah, they're not so friendly. <laughs> uh, I don't know what else I could say. Um, yeah, the preparation uh, of ballerinas before the show is, I think, probably the same everywhere. It's like their own ritual. Usually my ritual was uh, that I woke up in the morning, I uh, turned up for a ballet class, then I had a little rehearsal just to check a few steps, uh, to check with the music, then I would go home, I would have a lunch, I would uh, sleep for uh, one hour, two hours, then I would wake up around four o'clock, I would uh, eat again, <laughs> not a full meal, but uh, I don't know, some pasta or something to do get the energy, then I would uh, uh, turn up in the theater two hours before, 
uh, I would uh, eat again, I would have banana, <laughs> and, then I, <laughs> and then I had sure. a two, <laughs> sorry. Not, not sharing this. <laughs> <laughs> well, dancers, they, they do eat. We look like we don't eat, but actually we do eat. You have to eat. It's, it's your fuel. It's like in a car. You just have to put the petrol in. Uh, obviously, it's better to, to eat well than to eat some muffins and all that. <laughs> but we, yeah, we do eat actually more than, than you think, especially actually men. The male dancers, they do eat a lot. Okay, so then I would have the two hours to prepare myself. I would uh, have some assistant to do my hair, or I would do it myself. Uh, to put the makeup on, I always prefer to do it myself. Uh, I would choose the point shoes. I had usually about 20 pairs to choose from. Uh, some spare ones, maybe one pair would be for uh, act one, another different one for act two, because there was maybe more jumping, so I need a softer point shoes. I would wrap all my toes, every single of them, so I wouldn't get blisters, <laughs> little details like that. Um, I would warm up on stage, I would uh, try a few steps again, and uh, then the show starts. And through all this, I wouldn't really talk to anyone much. You do really need to focus. Yeah. That since you wake up, you do need to focus to, to, you know, to be able to be the best. <laughs> How long time does it take you to calm down after ah, the that's performance? that's a good question too, yes. Uh, early morning? Um, about one week. No, I'm joking. <laughs> <laughs> and of course, uh, you cannot fall asleep straight away. You, the, the show finishes and then again the, the preparation before you leave the, the, you know, the theater takes a while. Then you have a fans outside waiting for you. That's another, I don't know, half an hour. Then you get home and then you, you cannot eat straight away because the body is not ready for that. So maybe I would eat one hour after. Usually you cannot fall asleep, so you don't get much sleep, but uh, you need to turn up next day for body class again. Unfortunately, <laughs> you cannot take a week off. I think it's uh, one of the hardest art, I think, ever, because uh, you know you, you have a show, it's, it's a live, a live, how do you say, life? art, life, living art. <laughs> yeah, you, you basically you do a show and next day it's like you haven't done anything, you have to start again. And it's like again, over and over. If you are a painter, you paint a, you know, uh, you do some painting and then it's there forever. But for us, no. Well, yeah, we can film it now, but it's, it's, not, the, it's not the same. I'm surprised you understand my English. I think we had a question here. Yeah. Uh, Hi. My name is Jan. I'm very excited to meet you. Oh, it's okay. No, I think you can read the question. Do I have to? It's the microphone. <laughs> Hi, Daniel. Um, my name is Jan. I'm very excited to meet you. Um, I would like to ask you how was it for you at the beginning when you arrived to London or to England and you became a ballerina, the top ballerina? How was it for you to basically then kind of tell the English? Uh, colleagues of yours, uh, what they need to do, and how was it for you, you know, coming from East Europe and all of a sudden be on the top in London or in England and tell the others what their job is? Well, I wasn't telling them what to do. <laughs> um, no, I remember it, it was very hard because uh, the director was uh, Derek Dean, and I don't know if any of you heard uh, of him and his reputation, very hard uh, director. Uh, bullying dancers. Uh, I don't know if you've seen the film called uh, Agony and Ecstasy. Uh, Life, something like that. Agony and Ecstasy. Have a look, it's on YouTube and it's about <laughs> about Swan Lake. We had a BBC following us for uh, one year uh, and they produced three episodes. One is of Swan Lake, one Roman Juliet and third one uh, Nutcracker. And I am featured in the Swan Lake one and the Nutcracker, but the Swan Lake one was that the Derek Dean was uh, bullying uh, all the dancers, uh, mainly me. I was the star the being bullied. <laughs> so, but he was like this basically. So that was uh, that was very hard. Plus, I had a Russian training, which was quite uh, different to British training. British training is a little bit more conservative, which Russians they just go for it. So he was trying to change that. Um, it was hard, yeah, it took me about three months to kind of uh, satisfy him a little bit. 
<laughs> it was frustrating. Yeah. Thank you. And then um, I think I saw somewhere that you mentioned that you used to do, or oh, you took pictures because obviously you as a ballerina, you knew where the best pose will be for for the picture to be taken. So I'm just wondering if you still uh, taking photographs of shows and backstage. Yes, I do. Yes, I do. Uh, I actually uh, fell in love uh, with photography already when I was, uh, I don't know, about 12 years old. My dad, he had this like an old camera, and uh, I, d I don't know why it attracted me. Actually, I, th I think it was the, the the camera, the machine, the you know where you. I didn't understand anything, but I started to take pictures basically of uh, my uh, grandma's cat. That was like my first subject, <laughs> and then. Uh, um, I got as a present uh, like the oldest digital camera and uh, so on. Now I've got a really good camera. I love the live and the backstage. I love dancers. I love the body. I love the faces, the expression, the, the colors in it, the movement. So uh, I started to take photos of, uh, of that, yes, and it still excites me. I uh, mainly go now to the Royal Ballet because it's just next door across the road take photos during rehearsals backstage from the front and uh, Maria Nella Nunes she's a wonderful subject plus uh, Vadim Montagirov as well with who I danced for eight years in English National Ballet and then uh, again as I said when he left for Ryan Ballet we were still dancing during these little galas uh, I took a lot of photos of him and I am actually planning to uh, do a book so. Yes. Thank you. And sorry, the last one. Yeah. Um, <laughs> uh, I would like to know what is the um, I don't want to say pecking order, but like you are on the uh, on the top as the prima ballerina. What is like what are the other positions called at the back? The the in front, like for example, the the crew. Do they have any name? And then what is the next kind of stage to become? Oh, you mean like in the company, yes? Yeah, kind of like in the company, or like, you know, you are like an extra in the movie, and then you are the supporting actor or actress, and then ah, okay. you are the main character. Or well, it's, it's slightly different in, uh, in every company. I mean, it's the same, but the name's different. Like, there is a first year of Cour de Ballet. Like, I think at Royal Ballet, it's the first year of Cour de Ballet, second, third, fourth, fifth, and like, each year you are uh, promoted, you get a little bit of more money, or you're not promoted, you can also stay at the bottom. So there's like five years. Uh, I think then they have a, a solace, or I don't know, I don't remember now, but in some companies it's a solace, a first solace, then you would have a principal dancer, and then you ha would have a maybe first principal dancer, or called Etoile, like from Paris Opera. Yeah, it's. And it's uh, you get uh, different money, you get uh, of course uh, different roles. Yes, and uh, yeah. Thank you. And sorry, last one. <laughs> uh, um, you mentioned that the <coughs> Russian techniques are different to English ones or to the Western ones. I would like to know. I thought that the dance itself is like from Russia or like that's the most famous, I suppose, dancer. So what is the difference in the Western dance comparing to Russian school or technique? Well, I mean, like, Cuban technique is different to Russian technique. Uh, British, British technique is uh, it's, it's a mixture of, uh, of uh, Italian technique and all this, you know, they, they stole a little bit of here and here and then they created their own, which the Russian one they created themselves. Also, the uh, French technique is slightly different. They like the footwork is much faster. Um, British is, is a little more conservative. Like first arabesque would be like this, like this, <laughs> which in, in Russia maybe would be mm -hmm. it would be high. The arm and the head, everything would be high. So little differences like this, or in that fuetes, as I said, Russians that they, they would go and have an accent down and just sideways with the leg. Which in Western they would go to a, a front to demand an second, sorry, front and side, <laughs> and then in so slightly different like that. Or Cuban technique, they very much like lots of pirouettes and technique, not so much how they do it, but how many, how.
how much and how many. Quantity, not quality. Hmm? I said quantity. quantity. Yes, they're into quantity, not into quality. <laughs> As someone who experienced different social contexts of ballet by dancing in Czechoslovakia, after dancing in the West, dancing in South Africa, do you detect that there's a change in the audience that comes to see ballet now? Or is it the audience which is static and dependent on social background and class? Because when you watch the funding crisis that the big uh, ballet houses are going through in terms of state funding and so on, I'm very interested what is your view of the future audience for ballet? Well, yes, it's, it, it is a difficult one, yes. Um, I think uh, I think we're going to lose it if we don't uh, educate young, you know, young kids from the young age. I feel like the, the ballet will, I mean, it's a difficult. It's like, if you look at the Royal Ballet Opera House, it's always sold out. The people, they still find the money somehow to pay the really high tickets. But I think like a English National Ballet, it's, it's much more difficult to, to go to Manchester and have a sold uh, house. Um, yeah, I don't really have a solution. <laughs> a little bit more positive, you know. I think we might have something to show here. Uh, as Maria uh, mentioned, her passion for photography. So would you like to show us a few of your yes. pictures uh, before we conclude? I'm supposed to do it. They are actually my students. I was not allowed to take pictures, but I did take it secretly. <laughs> anyway. <laughs> yeah, this is the Royal Ballet, and it's uh, Marianela Nunes actually dancing Giselle, what you've seen in the beginning. And here on the side, it's uh, Vadim Montagirov. I just thought it was a really wonderful moment when she had these uh, emotions and jump up when she was uh, losing her mind. And this was from uh, uh, English National Ballet from uh, Rite of Spring. And the choreography was by uh, Kenneth Macmillan and I was just trying to play with, uh, with the motion. This is a game from Giselle and it's uh, Mariana Lanyunez and uh, Vadim Montagirov. And <laughs> they are my friends. Uh, <laughs> Yeah, that was just uh, very lucky, basically. It was the end of uh, Swan Lake. And uh, I just asked them all to turn around, I'll take pictures, and they all went. <laughs> and this is actually, I don't remember which ballet it was, but uh, it was contemporary ballet. And uh, the picture is uh, of uh, Erina Takahashi. She's the drama ballet in our English National Ballet. She's been dancing there for 25 years now. <laughs> And she's still there. And this is uh, just from the backstage of the Corte de Ballet from Giselle in neck to the dance of the Willis. And I don't know which ballerina this is, but uh, if I remember, it was uh, from some gala concert, and uh, she was dancing the giant swan. It was again, I was uh, dancing something different, and when I always finished my bed, I would sit down and would go and take pictures of uh, my colleagues. And this is, uh, I think, Nicola Marva. She's a ballerina from Czech National Ballet. She is uh, about 42 years old, so she's thinking about retiring. <laughs> uh, here she was uh, much younger. Again, Swan Lake, <laughs> and it's again Nicola Marwa, the Czech ballerina, with uh, uh, Michal Štipa, who uh, used to be a main dancer there as well, but he did stop. He was, uh, I think, an artistic director in one of the theaters in the Czech Republic. 
And this is my very good friend, Elena Guru Gurjitze from English National Ballet, and I just uh, caught her when she was uh, putting makeup on. I just thought she had this uh, really gorgeous face. I thought uh, I had to take a picture of that. And this is uh, another one of my friends warming up before the show. You can see she's got still a leg warmer on. I wanted to as well again take the movement. And this is me taking a picture of myself during this one leg, actually, just before the act three. <laughs> That's how I am concentrating. <laughs> no, I just, I don't know, I just saw the, the tiara and uh, the mirror, then I just thought, oh, I need to take a picture of myself. <laughs> it's again from the backstage, well, it's actually before the show. One of the dancers was stretching. I thought it was really lovely color and uh, the tutu. And this is uh, Tamara Rojo, who is the artistic director of San Francisco now. She was the uh, artistic director of uh, English National Ballet for uh, I think about 10 years. I think you all know her. Very strong woman, very strong. I really admire her. That's her as well. And those feet are by Jim Montagero's feet. To conclude the evening with this beautiful picture, and as you can see, the transition from the highly performing uh, dancer, uh, it's very successful to not only to be the teacher but also a ph photographer. And we might see one day perhaps the exhibition uh, by Daria Kunentova. But before that, so thank you very much, we really appreciate it. <laughs> Thank you uh, for joining us.